All right, today, ladies and gents, we're continuing the series on how to draw buttons and nav bars. And this is going to be part three, how to make a nav bar. And we're going to do that using the buttons that we created in the previous tutorials. Um, next, I'd like to show you uh, this. This is um, just a blank website that I had created. I put up a, a, a title at the top of the website. And I've created two nav bars already. And I did this to, to demonstrate a point that uh, I did this one using um, one of these original buttons that I created back here. Um, it, it was this one. And uh, originally typed in button text or something like that in, the in, this, uh, in this button. Um, and uh, I did the second one using this, uh, um, or actually this stretchy button, yeah? And if you'll notice, I've when I when I double click on this, it brings up the navigation bar properties, and I have unchecked this uh, this box here that says all buttons uh, the same width, so they they contract down to um, to a certain width. Uh, the issue with that is is that because I have I had originally typed in button text when I created these buttons, they are the exact width of this button text, even for anything that has smaller uh, text in there. They don't shrink, they don't narrow down uh, any beyond uh, this, this width here. Um, whereas if you look at these uh, that were made with the stretchy buttons that I, I initially created with just the I key, um, or the I, yeah, the I, letter I, um, when I when I type the text, these do shrink down to the minimum um, possible area when all, I use this all buttons the same width. Um, just so you know, it's uh, it depends on how you want things to look. It you may want them to be um, wider uh, if if you have bigger text or a minimum area, right? A minimum uh, sized area if you. Uh, um, you know, if you have something smaller like Homer's or Zara, like I have here, um, and and that's okay. That's that's quite all right. Um, it just depends on what you want. But I wanted to show you the difference. Um, and on this, uh, for example, I've gone ahead and added these uh, these sub uh, uh, menu, the sub menu here under under Zara. So if you want to take a look at that when we um, when we preview the site, if I were to highlight Zara, this is what you get. Yeah, Zara, Zara users, and, and talk graphics are the three things that I put in underneath this Zara button. Um, and we can talk about uh, how you change that up uh, a bit more, but uh, that's that's what this looks like. They're very very flat uh, sub menus that you can uh, that you can create using this um, this navbar tool. Um, these all work as I as I had set them up before. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of both of those for now and pull in. Uh, my stretchy button. Yeah, and I'm just going to click on it, press Control C to copy it, and come over here and press Control V and paste it into my uh, my website. Now this is much too large for what I want, um, and I created them extra large for for demonstration purposes in the in the original tutorials. But I'm just going to shrink that down to something um, relatively uh, decent size. Yeah, and I go ahead and. Uh, and position it wherever I want. I'll line it up with my with my title here, maybe. And uh, the first thing I want to do is go up to this um, little world icon, which uh, our World Wide Web type uh, um, uh, properties, right? Web, website properties and stuff like that. And go to this very last one, which is Create Navigation Bar. Okay. And I click on, on that Create Navigation Bar, and it brings up the Navigation Bar Properties uh, screen. Um, now I can go through and, and do a few things here. Uh, I'll just go ahead and add a few. So the first one says stretchy button, but I can go ahead and change that to be whatever I want. I'll uh, make this home. It's typically the first uh, uh, thing. New button. Um, again, Zara. Um, and here we can type in uh, photos, for example, and contact or something like that whatever you want it to be. And you could fill in, here you notice that uh, that I had used the pound key to, to make these buttons before, and they default, to, the URLs default to, to this pound key. You can change that to be whatever URL you want. Uh, it's, it's quite easy to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give this a two pixel space between the, the buttons, because I, I like the way that looks. 
and uh, and just so you, I'll show you that these are really are stretchy buttons. I'll type in something long here. Um, uh, let's see. My wedding photos or something like that. Yeah. Oh, what did I do there? All buttons the same width. We don't want that. Uncheck that. Unclick that, and there you go. They they. Uh, contract back down to just the width of the uh, of the text within the within the um, the button. Um, okay, this is already going going way too long, so I'm going to uh, skip on to how you would uh, enter in uh, some some a subgroup or a sub menu. So we're going to go under under Zara, and I'm going to double click. And what I've done is I've, I've clicked on this little little plus sign right here on the tree, right? and uh, double click underneath that, right, new item, and I'll go in and type in a few things. So, uh, Zara.com for one, double click another one, and we'll say Zara users, and another one just for, for giggles, and we'll uh, make that top graphics. Yeah, all right, and once that's done, uh, and just press OK, and if we preview this, you will see that under Zara, I have my my three different things, yeah, in the sub menu that I created, and that's really pretty much how you do it. Um, I'll show you a few other things really, really quickly. Um, you can kind of read over these uh, navigation bar properties and and kind of play with them to figure out what they do. Um, if you um, go down to this pop up menu style. You can uh, play with the uh, the the things that uh, that the the, the submenu the way the submenu looks uh, you know, spacing borders uh, animation you can instant or very fast slow medium whatever uh, if you want any transparency there uh, you can do that you can change the colors of the the background the menu background the menu text the menu background for when you roll over something um, or mouse over it. Uh, menu text for when you mouse over and uh, any border that you would like to have. And you just click on uh, this and use any one of the default uh, named colors or you can click edit and uh, you bring up the, the color editor and can make whatever color you want. Yeah? Uh, you can choose which direction the uh, the, the uh, submenu uh, goes, uh, either down, which is the default, or to the left or to the right, depending on if you have a vertical or, or a horizontal menu. Um, and uh, any horizontal offset if you want to to uh, to do that, and you can change the font and, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. It, it's all up to you. You can you can play around with this uh, quite a bit and and make it uh, however you want. In any case, uh, that's how you do it. That's how you create a nav bar using a button that you've created uh, within uh, within Zara. And I hope you found that useful and educational. We'll come back for part four of the tutorial.